video shows how to dismount and mount the cylinder head, piston and cylinder liner. With regard to overhauling of the components, please refer to the relevant instruction book or the overhaul video. Remove the rocker arm top cover and the covers giving access to the injection pump. Disconnect the fuel oil high pressure pipe. Disconnect the rocker arm lubricating pipes. Loosen and remove the cooling water outlet pipe. Remove the exhaust pipe flange screws. Remove the protective caps from the cylinder head studs. Clean the threads and grease with Molocoat or a similar product. Mount the extension tools and grease the threads. Mount the spacers in such a way that the tommy bar can be applied through the slots when the nuts are to be loosened. Mount the hydraulic jacks and screw them firmly against the spacers. Make sure that the parts engage correctly. Unscrew the jacks three quarters to one revolution to provide for the contraction of the studs. Connect the snap-on couplings to the distributor and to the jacks and connect the high pressure pump to the distributor. Vent the system if necessary and increase the oil pressure to the prescribed value. Unscrew the nuts with the tommy bar. Be careful not to screw the nuts up against the jack. Relieve the system of pressure and screw down the nuts so that the oil returns to the pump. Disconnect the hydraulic pump and remove the hydraulic tools. Remove the cylinder head nuts. Place the lifting tool on the cylinder head and fasten it by means of the two screws. Attach the hook to the lifting tool and lift the cylinder head away.
Turn the piston downwards and clean the upper part of the liner. Place a used piston ring on the top of the piston. Mount the tool for holding down the cylinder liner. Turn the piston upwards and push the flame ring out of the liner. Remove the flame ring and the piston ring. Clean the upper part of the liner. Turn the crank throw concerned to a position approximately 50 degrees before top dead center. Clean the threaded hole in the top of the piston. Mount the tool for holding down the cylinder liner. Mount the lifting eye bolt, hook on a tackle and haul tight. Remove the cover giving access to the crankcase compartment. The big end bearing may be designed for mechanical assembling or hydraulic assembling. Loosen the connecting rod screws and remove one of the uppermost screws. Mount the guide pin and insert a screwdriver or the like into the guide pin hole. Unscrew the remaining screws and remove the bearing cap. Remove the guide pin. Clean the threads and grease with Molocoat or a similar product. Mount the spacer rings and the hydraulic jacks, positioning the slots of the spacer rings so that the tommy bar can be applied through them when the nuts are to be loosened. Make sure that the parts engage correctly. Unscrew the jacks three quarters to one revolution to allow for the contraction of the studs. Vent the system if necessary and increase the oil pressure to the prescribed value. Unscrew the nuts with the tommy bar. Relieve the system of pressure and remove the hydraulic tools. Unscrew the nuts and remove the bearing cap. Finally, unscrew the studs. Push the connecting rod clear of the crank journal and lift the piston and connecting rod. Remove the upper big end bearing shell and lift the piston out of the engine. Land the piston on wooden planks and mount the bearing cap so as to protect the joint faces. Insert wooden wedges and lift the piston. Remove the Sega sear clip and piston pin and lift away the connecting rod.
Remove the tool which holds down the cylinder liner. Loosen and remove the screws which secure the cooling jacket to the engine frame. Lift the cooling jacket off the engine and remove the cooling water connections. Discard the old O-rings and mount new ones. Clean the ceiling surfaces with emery cloth and cleaning fluid. Discard the O-rings from the scavenge air sleeve and mount new ones. Remove and discard the O-ring on the underside of the cooling jacket. Lower the lifting tool into the cylinder liner. To ensure the correct remounting, make sure that matching marks have been made on the liner and on the frame. When the lower cross piece is in place, tighten the tool until it abuts against the cylinder liner. It is recommended that the crankshaft be protected by plastic, as two to three litres of water will drain off when the first liner is removed. Lift the cylinder liner out of the engine. Use a chisel and a hammer to loosen the ceiling ring. Clean the ceiling surfaces with emery cloth and cleaning fluid. Clean and check the condition of the wear ring in the bottom of the frame. If necessary, exchange the wear ring. Finally, remount the ceiling ring between liner and frame or, if necessary, mount a new ring. Mount the lifting tool in the new or overhaul cylinder liner. Lift the liner and clean the O-ring grooves. Lubricate the new O-rings with oil and mount them in the grooves of the liner. Lower the liner carefully into the engine frame. When the first O-ring touches the ceiling face, align the liner so that the scratch mark on the liner flange is in line with the scratch mark on the frame. When the liner has been lowered fully home into the frame, remove the lifting tool. Fit a new ceiling ring in the groove on the top of the liner.
Measure and record the distance y. Lubricate the cooling water connections with oil and mount them in the engine frame. Mount a new o-ring in the groove on the underside of the cooling jacket. Mount the cooling jacket and tighten it to the cylinder frame by means of the Allen screws. Mount new o-rings on the protecting tubes for the push rods. Lubricate the scavenge air sleeve with oil and mount it in the cooling jacket. Finally, mount the push rods. Place the piston upside down and lower the connecting rod into the piston. Make sure that the ST marking on the piston crown points in the same direction as the bearing cap. Lubricate the piston, connecting rod and piston pin with oil and insert the piston pin. Mount the Sega sir clip and ensure that it engages correctly in the groove. Insert wooden wedges, tilt the piston and mount the lifting eye bolt. Always use new piston rings and a new scraper ring. Fit the rings in accordance with the markings shown on this sketch. Assemble the coil spring in the lowermost groove. Assemble all rings so that the numbers face upwards. Fit the scraper ring so that the ring joint and spring joint are offset approximately 180 degrees. Use the special piston ring opener when fitting the piston rings. The piston rings may be permanently distorted if the ring opener is not used. Check that the rings can move freely in the grooves. Ascertain correct assembling by checking that the face of the rings can be pressed inside the groove edge. To confirm the vertical clearance, insert a feeler gauge of adequate thickness and move it all the way round. Finally, offset all the ring joints approximately 180 degrees to prevent gas leakage. Remove the bearing cap from the connecting rod. Mount the guide ring on top of the cylinder liner. The guide ring for liners with a flame ring is provided with a protrusion. Lubricate the guide ring with oil in order to minimize the friction. Clean the connecting rod and joint faces and mount the upper bearing shell. The correct free spread will ensure that the shell will remain in position. Mm -hmm. 
lubricate the piston, piston rings and scraper rings and lower the assembly into the cylinder liner. Make sure that the crank throw is in a position of approximately 50 degrees before top dead center. Clean and lubricate the crank journal with oil. Land the connecting rod on the crank journal, taking care not to damage the journal and bearing shell. The big end bearing may be designed for mechanical or hydraulic assembling. Insert the guide pin. Mount the bearing shell in the bearing cap and coat the joint faces with molly coat or a similar product. Mount the bearing cap and insert a screwdriver in the guide pin hole. Lubricate and mount the screws and remove the lifting tool from the piston. Adjust the torque spanner to 400 newton meters. Using an initial torque of 400 newton meters, Tighten the screws in the tightening sequence shown. Retighten the screws in the same tightening sequence, still using a torque of 400 newton meters. Mark the four screws of the bearing cap with a felt-tipped pen. Tighten the screws in the same tightening sequence through a 60 degree angle until the marks on the collars and the connecting rod coincide in the radial direction. Adjust the torque spanner to 700 newton meters. Check the tightness of the screws. If the screws cannot be tightened further at this torque, they have attained their correct tightness. Check that the bearing cap can move easily on the journal.
Lubricate and mount the studs on the connecting rod. Mount the bearing shell in the bearing cap and coat the joint faces with molly coat or a similar product. Mount the bearing cap and lubricate the threads with a molly coat or a similar product. Screw the nuts onto the studs and tighten them with a tommy bar. Remove the lifting tool from the piston. Mount the hydraulic tools. Make sure that the parts are correctly engaged. Vent the system if necessary and increase the oil pressure to the prescribed value. Tighten the nuts with a tommy bar. Relieve the system of pressure, repressurize, retighten the nuts and repeat this process until it is ensured that the nuts cannot be tightened further. Remove the hydraulic tools. Check that the bearing cap can move easily on the journal. Mount a new flame ring in the top of the cylinder liner. Lubricate new O-rings with oil and mount them in the grooves in the lower part of the cylinder head. Make sure that the sealing surfaces of the cylinder head are clean and undamaged. Also check that the sealing surfaces of the liner are clean and undamaged. Measure and record distance Z. To ensure that the sealing between the cylinder head and the liner is correct, Y minus Z must be more than 0.5 mm. Land the cylinder head on the liner and remove the lifting tool. Check all contact faces of the cylinder head and nuts, including threads, and make sure that they are plain and absolutely free of foreign particles. Coat the threads and the contact faces with molecoat coat or a similar product and screw the cylinder head nuts onto the studs. Tighten the nuts with a tommy bar. Make sure that the nuts bear on the entire circumference of the contact surface. Knock a wedge in between the cylinder head and exhaust pipe and insert a new gasket and the screws, but do not tighten the screws as yet. Mount the extension tools, spacers and hydraulic jacks on the cylinder head studs. Make sure that the parts are correctly engaged and ensure that the tommy bar can be applied through the slots of the spacers. 
Connect the hydraulic high pressure pump and vent the system if necessary. Tighten the venting screws when oil without air bubbles is emitted. Increase the pressure to the prescribed value and tighten the nuts with a tummy bar. Check with a feeler gauge inserted in the recess of the spacer that the nuts bear against the contact faces. Relieve the system of pressure. Screw the nuts down so that oil returns to the pump and remove the hydraulic tools. Mount the protecting caps. Insert and tighten the remaining screws of the exhaust pipe and mount the cooling water connection. Turn the piston to top dead centre and check that the rollers rest on the circular part of the cams, in which position both the inlet and exhaust valves are closed. Loosen the adjustment screws on the rocker arm and on the valve bridge of the inlet valve. Insert the 0.4mm feeler gauge marked correct between the spindle and valve bridge nearest the rocker arm bracket. Tighten the adjustment screw until the correct clearance has been obtained and then tighten the lock nut. Leave the feeler gauge in position and insert another 0.4mm feeler gauge between the second spindle and valve bridge. Tighten the adjustment screw until the correct clearance has been obtained and tighten the lock nut. Check simultaneously that the clearance is correct at both valve spindles. Finally, make sure that the 0.5mm feeler gauges marked incorrect cannot be inserted between the spindles and bridge. Repeat the procedure for the exhaust valve spindles, this time using the 0.9mm feeler gauges marked correct and the 1.0mm feeler gauges marked incorrect. Lubricate the fuel oil high pressure pipe with Molocote or a similar product. Fit the pipe and tighten the union nut to the torque stated in the instruction book under data for torque moment. Fit the lube oil pipes. Re-establish the supply of cooling water, fuel oil, cooling oil and lubricating oil. Prior to startup, check for cooling water and oil leakages and check the oil flow.
After startup, check for leakages and check the oil flow. Fit a new gasket and mount the cover for the rocker arms. Finally, mount the front covers for the fuel pumps. <laughs>